a larger display, a bigger battery, and all of the new Samsung Galaxy AI features. This is the new Samsung Galaxy S24 FE, or OnlyFans edition. One of the first videos with this in the world, so a thumbs up for your boy would be appreciated. Let's get it unboxed and take a closer look. Now, the unboxing experience is super simple. We do have a 100% recycled paper material for the box, which is nice. And inside, as well as the device, there is a pack with a SIM card tool, a USB Type-C cable, and some paperwork. And no, there is no charger included out of the box. We've not had one for a while. And here it is. I've got the blue version here, but it's also gonna be available in a graphite, a gray, a mint, as well as a yellow. Now, in terms of the design, it's very familiar. We've got that triple ring design, and it does look quite similar to the S24 and the S24 Plus. So we've got flat sides with curved edges, and we have a glossy back for the S24 FE, whereas we had a matte finish on the S24 and the S24 Plus. I personally do prefer that matte finish, but it looks like they've stuck to the glossy here to give it some separation. There's an armor aluminum frame, and we've got Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, and it does have an IP68 water under resistant rating. Now, in terms of the size, it's slightly thinner compared to the S23 FE from last year, but it is slightly larger in terms of the height and width, and it weighs a few grams more. Now, this is because it has a larger display. We've got a 6.7-inch Full HD Plus display. This is up from the 6.4-inch display that we had in the S23 FE. Now, the bezels are slightly smaller compared to what we had on the S23 FE, but they are not as small as what we've got on the flagship S24 and the S24 Plus. And looking at this head on, the bezels are not uniform. I'd say that we do have a slightly larger chin compared to the top bezel. How much of those bezels are gonna matter to you? I'm not sure, but this is a nice display. We've got dynamic AMOLED 2X technology with a 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate. So it goes down to 60, not all the way down to one Hertz. We do have Samsung's Vision Booster, which is gonna adapt the display based on what you're watching. And this is brighter compared to the S23 FE. So you've got a peak brightness of around 1900 nits, which is up from around about 1450 nits, I believe, that we had on the S23 FE. Now, let's take a look around the device. So, at the bottom, we have a USB Type-C input. We've got one of the two stereo speakers, one's at the bottom and one is in the earpiece. Nothing on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we've got a power button with a, a volume rocker. And then at the top, we've got some mics as well as the SIM card tray. Now, here in the UK and other regions, we do have two physical SIM card slots that might be different based on your region. Now, a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video so far and you wanna see more like it, then do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. And if you're interested in more short form content, then I do post lots of shorts on my shorts channel, which is conveniently named Super Saf Shorts. We're almost on 100,000 subscribers on that channel, so do consider subscribing to that one as well. I'll leave that link down in the description below. Now, within the display, we've got the punch out for the selfie camera. This is 12 megapixels. Taking a few selfies with this, and it does seem to produce good quality selfies with good dynamic range and detail. And then we've got the rear facing cameras. Now, as far as I can see, when it comes to the hardware, these are the same as what we had on the S23 FE. So we've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. There's the 50 megapixel primary camera, which has optical image stabilization. Now this is the same hardware as the base S24. And then we have an eight megapixel telephoto camera, which is gonna give you three times optical zoom and up to 30 times digital zoom. Now testing these over the past few days, good quality results. You're getting good zoom, even up to 30 times. It's pretty decent. And although the camera hardware seems to be the same, we do have the new image signal processor from the new chipset, which should be helping. So this is powered by the Samsung Exynos 2400E. Now this is a four nanometer chipset. This is gonna be in the UK and I believe European regions, but if you buy this in the US, then I believe you will be getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, performance-wise, both the Exynos 2400 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 are tried and tested. They're very capable chips. And the S24 FE has a larger vapor chamber compared to last year, 
and we've got eight gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. We've got either 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage, although if you do go for the 256 version, you will be getting faster storage. Now for the software, this comes with Android 14 with one UI 6.1 out of the box. And as Samsung has promised with their other devices, you will be getting seven generations of software updates and seven years of security updates. So this will actually be a little bit longer compared to the S24 and the S24 Plus, which came out earlier this year. And as mentioned at the start of this video, this does come with all of the latest Samsung Galaxy AI features. The ones we saw introduced on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 and the Z Flip 6. Now, there are a lot of AI features, so I'm gonna run through them quickly. We've got circle to search, which we've seen on other Google devices. This is really useful to search things within any image just by circling. We've got call assist, which is real-time translations during voice calls. There's chat assist, which is gonna let you compose as well as change the writing style and tone of your messages. Interpreter will give you live translations of spoken conversations. Note assist will auto format, summarize and translate notes. Transcript assist will transform recordings into text transcriptions and summarize them as well. Browsing Assist is one of my favorites. I use it all the time. This will let you get simple summaries of web pages. It's particularly useful for long articles where you just want the highlights. And then we've got the Photo Assist features, which are also some of my favorites. You can transform images by moving people around, removing people from the background. But more importantly, with Drawing Assist, you can transform simple drawings into art. And this is something that I actually find myself using quite frequently. Whether that be to change your hairstyle, change your clothes, or add something that's not there in the background. And it comes back to what's a real picture anymore, we just never will know. Some of these things look very, very convincing. Now, as far as I know, these features, as with the S24 series, will be free until the end of 2026. What happens after that, I'm not sure. But it is good to see that we've got all of the AI features that are on the flagship devices without compromise. And I think this will really make the S24 FE stand out in its price range because there is a lot of other competition. Right, for the battery, we've got an increased battery size, 4,700 milliamps, up from around 4,500 that we had on the S23 FE. Now, I've only had this for a couple of days, but in my experience, the battery life has been good. It's not as good as the S24 Plus, which has a larger 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but it's still very good. And this supports 25 watt charging. The adapter is not gonna come included, so you're gonna have to use one you already have or get another one. That will give you around a 50% charge in 30 minutes. And this also supports fast wireless charging 2.0, so that's around 15 watts. And you can charge other devices at the back of the S24 FE because this has wireless power share. Now for the pricing. So the S24 FE in the UK, is gonna be starting at 650 pounds for the 128 gigabyte version or 700 pounds for the 256 gigabyte version. Remember that is faster storage. I would personally go for the 256 version. Now I know what a lot of people are gonna be asking, why should you go for this instead of say the S24, the S24 Plus? Now the starting price for the S24 was 800 pounds. So this is gonna be around 150 pounds cheaper. And if you compare it to the S24 Plus, which started at 1000 pounds for the 256 gigabyte version, then this is around 300 pounds cheaper. Having said that, both the S24 and the S24 Plus have been out for a few months now. So you should be able to get better deals on them, but this should still come in cheaper compared to the S24 Plus and Samsung do have some really good pre-order deals. I will leave links to those down in the description below. They usually throw in some earphones or give you some discounts and other things. And these are usually exclusive to pre-orders. So you might actually get a much better deal on the S24 FE than you might do on a pre-owned or on a sale S24 or S24 Plus. So that is the Samsung Galaxy S24 FE. What do you guys think about it? Drop me a comment below, let me know. And also let me know if there's any further coverage you'd like me to do with this. If you wanna see some related videos, I'll leave those linked here and here. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. And as always, do smash that like button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.